Traders. Today we're going to be looking at Bitcoin, we're going to be doing a risk update, and we're also going to be looking at the primary logarithmic regression band because I've gotten a ton of questions about both of these. Um, I was actually trying to go to sleep and I couldn't sleep, so I just got back up and making a video. Um, so if you guys like this content, please subscribe to the channel, check out the Telegram channel uh, as well if you want to discuss the charts in real time. We're almost at 2,000 members, so we are steadily climbing. So, um, if you're not familiar with, with the risk chart, basically it's just a, a mathematical way of looking at historical data and trends and accounting for diminishing returns as we move forward through time and also accounting for lengthening cycles. So if you don't prescribe to those theories or don't think they're valid in any way, then this might not be of interest to you. Um, uh, but if you do, or you know, you think that even if you're on the four-year cycle theory, then maybe you could still squeeze some information out of this, then, then feel free to enjoy. But basically, you know, we're human, and it's hard to make emotional decisions, or we make emotional decisions when markets move quickly, and a lot of people end up capitulating at the worst time possible, and a lot of people end up buying at the worst time possible. So I created the risk metric, and I think it's been useful to a lot of people so far. So I want to dive in. So the chart you see on the screen is not updated. Now the next chart will be, I just want to, I want to show you where we were. And when we were at this point, there were a lot of people saying, man, I wish I could have bought in the blue region. Like, I really wish I could have bought in these regions. So many people were saying it, you know, and, and, I, and I pushed forward this idea of dynamically dollar cost averaging your buys. So a couple weeks ago, the risk for Bitcoin was around 0.43 or so, and I, I would say, you know, if your people would say, should I buy? And I would say, well, if you're dollar cost averaging, if you consider yourself to be a moderate risk taker, then, you know, you probably want to be dollar cost averaging, you know, the smallest amount you might otherwise do. And then if the risk were to decrease, then you could up that, up that ante. And that's the basic idea. Now, with that in mind, you know, go back and, 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 and grab that feeling you had from two or three weeks ago, bef you know, before Bitcoin broke the 20 week moving average and essentially everything uh, just went, you know, every, everything just started going down. Bitcoin went down 50% in, in a day, uh, it did recover, as, you know, to some degree, but grab that feeling. And now we're going to look at the updated risk, risk, risk chart. That's what it looks like. All right, and even at the current price of Bitcoin around 55, 5600 or so, the current risk level is 0.25. Um, and, and you can see, again, how we've entered this blue buy region. And we're still, we're still at a risk of 0.25, but we are in you know, the bottom fourth of, of the risk levels. So I think that's important to consider. Clearly, we could go lower. That's not, you know, that's ultimately not the point of, of um, of, of what I'm trying to say, the point is that the risk level now is so much better than it was two weeks ago. So that for the people that are prescribing to this model and are not following the you know the the daily updates and whatever in the private in the private group, then you know you know the risk today is is 0.25, and you can imagine if the price were to drop further, then obviously the risk would drop further in the short term. And I uploaded a, a spreadsheet to the private private Telegram group that showed all the different risk levels and um, or all the different price points that we you know that we theoretically could be hitting soon and what the risk is associated with that. And we were doing updates in real time. Now, one of the things we've talked about before is the idea of setting buys at key milestones. This was the 200-week moving average, and then we have said before that you know. A, a, a very ultimate bearish scenario would be hitting the 300 week moving average. And we did that, and the wick of the price hit the 300 week moving average for about you know a few seconds at around $3,700. And I know a lot of people were able to snatch up some fairly cheap Bitcoin at that price. Now, the thing with the risk metric is that I'm only looking at daily data. So it doesn't look at, at wicks or anything like that, we're just looking at the closing price. But as a, as a useful thought exercise, what if I did look at minute, minute data? And what if, what if I had captured that wick, not, not for the entire history, but just that one wick that went down to $3,700? What would the risk chart have looked like? And this is what it looked like. If I can move forward one. Okay, so you can see we dropped even further there. So let me toggle between the two. So for a brief period of time, the risk dropped to 0.12. 
and we had live updates in the group and the telegram the private telegram group and we were saying okay we're at 300 week moving average i was i mean i don't normally tell people when i'm buying but i certainly was then at the 300 week and the risk at the time hit 0.12 and a lot of people will say well you know with everything going on in the world the market structure could you know could not be sustained and there is some truth to your statement it's not like i can definitively say that we won't go below the 300 week moving average i mean i've been plotting several videos on the coronavirus and the doubling rate is every four to five days um but you know so i think things are going to get worse before they get better and i think a lot of people are going to be at home for the next few weeks um and and so on and so forth so I, you know, it's not to say that the price can't go lower. It's not to say that we won't retest the, the 300 week, even if it's just a wick. Um, so I think that's an, an important thing to consider. Um, remember, all of these prior cycles where you see that we went into the dark blue, people were still really fearful. You know, maybe most of those times we weren't doing 50% drops in a day. But when you see price do this, there's not going to be a ton of people buying at that at that point. Because, I mean, just look at what the price did. And over here, when the price dropped, you can see that at this point right here where we saw that wick to like $175 or so, there was a lot of fear. And we shot back up almost instantly. And if you were watching the price action, I was watching it. If you were watching it, we went from $3,700 to around $5,500 in, in just like a few minutes or something. It was, it was incredible. So the point of the risk chart, if you just want to follow the public channel and you don't want to you know, do the premium stuff, um, then it's fine because you can still get, you know, the macro level moves. You can still say, okay, well, risk is 0.25 now. It was 0.45 last week. And I'm going to take that into consideration if I'm dollar cost averaging my buys, say, every month or something. That's something you could, you could consider. Um, if you're, you know, if you're more interested in, in finding out what the risk is every day or something, then I don't have, I don't have it on a trading view indicator yet. Um, that is, I hope to get, get on that soon but if you want then check out the the premium the premium group which you can find in the description below at patreon.com slash into the cryptoverse so let's continue let's take the color out and let's look at the primary y-axis and the secondary y-axis so we have price over here and then risk over here so the orange curve is the risk and this is what it looks like this is this is current data you can see that the risk has dropped significantly and that the risk was at around 0 0.43, 0 0.44, not that long ago. Um, and if you were to, again, if you were to have plotted the wick, then it would have looked, well, let me get to that in a minute. The, the idea that we've, we've, we've talked about before is, is this idea of dynamically dollar cost averaging. And a lot of people have a hard time doing it. And I, I, I've come to know, I've come to realize why some people have a hard time doing it. It's because a lot of people didn't start doing it because I didn't really present this idea to, to YouTube um, that long ago. But a lot of people had a hard time because, you know, we were already at a risk level of 0.4 and, and people were just wanting to put as much into the market as they could. They weren't, say, disciplined to, to hold off on what they were putting in. They just wanted to throw in as much as they could without, without the foresight to say, okay, well, if the risk drops, am I going to have extra cash on hand to, to continue putting in? Um, and so it, but I think from starting from say the market bottom or whenever we hit the market bottom, wherever that might be, it might be, it might have been, it may have been 3,700, it may be 3,100, it, it could be lower. I, I don't know, but the risk is obviously has dropped significantly. So if you were to start dollar cost averaging, you're, you know, dynamically doing it, then, you know, perhaps you bought say, and this is just, you know, this is just an example, perhaps you bought you, you, you know, you buy, let's call this X. So if it's between 0.4 and 0.5, you buy X. Um, and I don't know why I, this should say 2X, 3X, 4X, and 5X, but it just says X. Uh, but you can see that, you know, if you're buying 200 at this level, then one idea is in 400 at this level, 600 at this level, 800 at this level, and 1,000 at this level. That way, if the risk ever drops, you're going to, it's going to, um, you know, trigger you to make a, a buy order that dwarfs what you were putting in before. And the reason why that's hard is because let's say that you want to dollar cost average, say, $500 a month. Let's say you want to dollar cost average $500 a month. And, you know, the risk is between 0.4 and 0.5. Well, if you put in $500 and then your next, the next month, the risk drops by 0.2 or 0.3 down to the, let's say it drops to the 0.1 level. Um, your, your monthly budget is still 
you know, maybe it's only $500 and you can't do more. But if you had only put $100 in up here, then you would have had that extra money to put in um, when the risk dropped. Now, the nice thing about this is now that we're closing in, we're, you know, we're, we're, we've definitely dropped a lot. Um, so if you if you flip the strategy and then you say, okay, we're going to dollar cost average higher amounts, and then if the risk ever starts increasing, we're going to lower that dollar cost average to keep our average risk level down because we don't want to go into the bull market with a, a super high risk level. And I know a lot of people, the last thing on your mind at this point is is a hypothetical bull market. But again, I do think this fits into this into the into the theory that we have lengthening cycles, and that 2019 and 2020 are the years to accumulate. Um, you know, I, I, I've said time and time again, I don't think that we're going to be breaking an all-time high in 2019 or 2020 just because the market structure does not suggest that that is that likely of a possibility. Now, of course, there's always a probability that it happens, but I think that probability is low. But the nice thing about this risk metric now is that it doesn't really matter what Bitcoin does in terms of, say, two or three years, it can still be helpful in terms of managing your emotions and just sticking with the numbers because I can guarantee a lot of you, whatever you're doing, if you're just trading off emotions, how many of you probably sold at $3,700 or $4,000 because you thought Bitcoin was going to $1,000? Um, now, not to say that it can't, but that is something, that is something you know, I, I would at least say that you should consider when when. Uh, dollar cost averaging your buys, and of course, you know this strategy really plays into the into the idea that Bitcoin will go on another bull run, and that it is you know it is the future. It is say this digital gold. If you don't prescribe to that, then obviously then this risk metric might not be for you. But if you are convinced that that is going to happen, and it's just a matter of time, then I think this metric will have a good. Uh, it will have a good chance of, of managing your emotions um, instead of relying on, you know, whatever it might be. Because when Bitcoin was at eight thousand and it dropped to five thousand, you know, it's hard to exactly know where it is on, on say, a, from a risk management standpoint. Because it feels like at that point it's already going to zero. And then if it drops to thirty seven hundred, well, then what does that mean? And that's the point of the metric. Now, if we also extended this line to have actually captured the wick, it would have looked like this. And we, you know, this was a risk of 0.12, and we got just north of this final buy region. Um, so if if we drop below 3,700, then the risk is obviously, you know, it's if if we drop say a couple hundred dollars below 3,700, then we're definitely going to enter this this buy region um, down here. Uh, so I, I think this is just I I want to you know elucidate all these thoughts and, and provide people with an update. Now, one of the things that I've gotten a ton of, of requests about is, okay, that I, I published a video a few days ago on the primary logarithmic regression band, and a lot of people are thinking, oh, we probably broke that. Well, I just want to show you what it looks like. So this is, is the primary logarithmic regression line, but note we always add that tolerance band in to, to try to account for all of the fluctuations. And I'm adding the same one in I promise you I've not changed it. You can even screen capture this if you want to and compare it to the prior video. Um, but this is the exact same uh, tolerance band that I drew. And you can see we came straight to the bottom of it. Not to say we can't go below it. I, I, I really want to stress that. The, the point is, is we were, we were at the bottom of this risk band in the last cycle for a number, for a number of months. You know, we were below it here and here, over here. Um, this isn't exactly uncharted territory. So, um, you know, I, until, until we really drop down below, you know, down here, then I, I, I would say I would concede that, okay, this, the logarithmic regression line has been invalidated because we've entered into a recession, you know, based on coronavirus and we're having a, you know, a, a supply shock or a demand shock and it's completely disrupting the world economy and people are liquidating high-risk assets, including Bitcoin. Now, that could happen. Uh, and we're not going to discount, obviously, that possibility. At the same time, the people who are taking the risk now, while they, while it is a, it is a big risk, admittedly, they would also have the, they would stand the most to gain if there is a bull market. Because if you're buying Bitcoin at, you know, at, at say three to five thousand dollars, and it were to go to a hundred, a hundred thousand dollars, then you're looking, you know, to make thirty something x. If you, you know, if you wait down the road and there's nothing wrong with that if that's what your risk tolerance is if you want to wait till bitcoin gets back to say ten thousand you know that's fine um but just know that because you're not taking on that level of risk you know now when the price is lower and the risk is say between 0.2 and 0.3 
then you would not stand to gain as much if there is another bull market. So if we were to extend this out, you can see ultimately the, this, the market structure still looks mostly, I mean, it still looks intact to me. Um, we have published a video that talked about the route to $1 million, and I, 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 you know, I talked about how I don't really think Bitcoin will get to $1 million until sometime, say, 2038 to 2040. Sorry if that disappoints you. Um, but ultimately, uh, I do think that the price will drop below the band. I, I wasn't really necessarily thinking it would happen this cycle, and it, and it stands to be seen if it does. Um, but ultimately, I think it would drop below the band, and the reason why is because it, you know, the, the type of growth that we're seeing is, is going to keep decaying. You know, we're not going to experience the same level of volatility every market cycle. And for instance, if we were to draw, if we had drawn a logarithmic regression band, just say fitting this data, it would have looked, you know, something more like that. And then if we had fit it, just say with this data and this data and, and this data, it may have looked like, like that. We fit it with three cycles of data. And so it looks like this, but ultimately we, we are going to have to reiterate on it. There's not, it's not, a, it's not a perfect model by any means. We're, we're hoping to use this model now so that we can better, you know, at least have a, a better prediction of what might be coming in the next market cycle. And then we'll rinse and repeat. And what I'll probably do, I wasn't planning on doing this, but what I'll probably do is maybe I'll even refit it to include, you know, back the fact that we're back in the band now to include these data points. And what it's going to do is it's going to it's going to slightly shift it down, um, and I don't know if it I don't really know to the extent that it would shift that, that it would shift it down. Um, but if you guys want me to, I, I can continue to to refit it. The idea is to just get a, a a better idea of a fair valuation price of Bitcoin compared to this you know this long trend line that we that we've seen. So you know, with that said, I hope I hope this has been informative to everyone. Uh, I, you know, people were asking for the risk updates. People were asking for the graph of the the regression band, um, and I hope I hope this is an, this is useful. If you if you just like the free content, again, I love to have you here. Um, I really appreciate everyone who watches the videos. Check out the Telegram channel if you wanna if you wanna discuss these things. We try to tr try to keep it with a, a really high level of uh, discussion. You you know, we try to curb any any talk that. Um, is is not up to par, up to snuff, and we we try to keep it level-headed and with um, uh, you know treating each other with respect. And if you want the the premium content, then we do have the Patreon channel. Um, and if you want to pay with crypto, that's fine. Just contact me on Telegram. A lot of people are just paying with crypto. It's kind of in the nature of crypto to to do that, so that's completely fine. And we do have a private Telegram group with almost a hundred people, and I think it's a, a really great group and. Um, a lot of people have, have gained a lot by being in there. Um, so if you if you do uh, if you want to join, let me know or just join. You can find the link to the private group after you join. Um, but again, I hope this has been useful, and I will talk to everyone next time. Bye.